Okay, we are ready for our final session for the day. Uh, Big Talk from Small Libraries 2017. I'm Krista Porter, your host for today from the Nebraska Library Commission here in still snowy Lincoln. It has been snowing all day um, here. I can't wait to try and get home. <laughs> Um, on the line with us today, we have uh, right um, now is Jane Jane Somerville from Stanley, Idaho. Did you have any of the storm come through where you are? I've been asking everybody about their weather today. Uh, we did not actually have snow today, but you uh, will see from my slides that we have had more than our fair share this year. I do know other librarians in the state, and I've seen <laughs> the reports of it, yes. Uh, so Jane has this presentation for today, Gold Nuggets, Mining Your Community for New and Exciting Programs. Um, she's got a whole bunch of great ideas here uh, for doing partnerships in your community to just get um, some more interesting um, events happening in your library. So I'm just going to hand it over to you, Jane, to take it away and tell us all about your ideas. All right, thanks for having me. A uh, little bit about our community. This is our fancy new library that we opened in January of 2013. <clears throat> Just a little aside that we did build this library all with uh, grants and donations and did not raise taxes, so we're, we're quite proud of that. Um, Stanley is located in the heart of Idaho. Um, about an hour north of uh, Sun Valley, uh, if that helps you with your geography. Um, we were founded in the 1860s. Uh, Captain John Stanley, a Civil War veteran, led a party of prospectors to the Stanley Basin. And so our, our, our history is mining, and we've, our community still reflects that heritage. Um, we are, uh, our population is 63, uh, but that's very misleading because we are a resort area and in the, the summer we have uh, up to 2 million visitors pass through our community as we're in the middle of the Sawtooth National Recreation Area. Uh, and as you can, whoops, <laughs> sorry about that. As you can see from the photos, uh, we do have our fair share of snow this year. This is our library in the top right, and that is a full-size door um, on the right side. And then our community center and just a nice little picture of our neighborhood. Yep, yeah, that's the kind of pictures I saw, yes, earlier this winter. <laughs> and, uh, uh, we normally have a lot of snow, but this year is like a 50-year, at least, winter. Um, mm. Our three major highways out of, in and out of our community have been closed several times this year, so no one could go in and no one could go out. Oh my. Do you have, that? you mentioned tourism, um, are your visitors all year round, or is it just seasonal then? Um, do we do you have... have activities? We, we do have winter activities. Um, with snowmobiling obviously is huge and uh, cross-country skiing. Uh, we do not have downhill skiing. So, um, um, But the majority of our um, visitors come in the summer and the fall. Okay. Um, so partnerships are integral to, to excellent programming and we partner with um, our our little two-room school, oh, I'm sorry, I keep doing that, our little two-room school, gracious sakes, this is touchy, um, but that's really a horrible picture up in the right-hand corner there. Um, restaurants, um, uh, our clinic, our chamber of commerce, uh, the forest service, fish and game, uh, clinics, um, service clubs, the fire department, anybody we can. We'll we'll um, we'll grab them for to help us with programming, but the the most important partners are the people in your community. Uh, we all have uh, people in our communities with exceptional talents. We have collectors, uh, just people who are knowledgeable about certain uh, areas. Um, so. 
those are your most important partners. Um, a big thing that I need to say is tr don't try and do this alone. Um, uh, we did have in the past programming parties, you can see the poster for this, um, but the same people kept showing up so now I don't really advertise it in the community anymore but we have a core group that meets twice or three times a year uh, to set up programs and we're always on the lookout for something unique. Um, we all uh, keep an eye on our local newspapers, um, of course the internet, and we keep uh, a file of ideas and I'll, I'll give you a, a good example of um, how those can come in handy later on in the presentation. Um, now we'll actually get into some of the programs that we do in our little tiny town of 63. Uh, one thing that you could start doing is jazzing up an existing program. For years and years um, our library participated in our state Let's Talk About It program, uh, but we pretty much read through everything they had. Um, we, we did ours a little differently than most people in the state. We, we first called ours um, bowls and books and we would have potluck. Two people would bring soup, two people would bring bread, and two people would bring dessert. The scholars were always really happy to get a home cooked meal. Um, but the same people ended up cooking all the time and after we uh, um, went out on our own and chose our own books, we, we um, now call it Books, Burgers and Brews and we go to a different restaurant each month to do our book club. Uh, we do not meet in the summer because everyone here gets extremely busy in the summer so, and we do not meet in December. Um, so during our off seasons and shoulder seasons, uh, we're supporting our, our local restaurants. Uh, we just met last night. We had 12 people discussing Freakonomics, which isn't, wasn't the most popular book, but um, we still had 12 people, so we're pleased with that. Uh, Read and Feed, this is the only kids program I'm going to talk about. Um, we only have this year we only have nine kids in our K through 8 school. Um, uh, Read and Feed, I uh, came across the book by Catherine Kloster, Karen Sipes, and Vicki Thomas years and years ago and that's how I started doing my programs. I used books in this in this book. All, all the kids read the same book. Um, they come to the library and we eat food that's mentioned in the book and do activities related to uh, the story. Uh, this, the ones that are pictured is uh, Homer Price. Uh, the kids had a great time with this one. Um, I could honestly talk about Read and Feed for the, the whole hour. Um, if you have any questions uh, later on um, or, or afterwards and want to email me, I'd be happy to answer um, about Read and Feed. Uh, it's tons of fun. The kids absolutely love this program and um, the book is still in print so um, if you wanted to purchase that and do your programs um, that's, it's still available. Um, Armchair Traveler Series, uh, we've done this for a long time but I actually got the, the new title for this from listening to a big talk you know, last year or the year before. Um, a lot of people in our community travel and they're, um, it's a little bit like come and see the slides from my vacation <laughs> but um, people are always interested in other parts of the world. Um, we've done, we try and do three, about three a year. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry about that. 
Uh, the ones pictured, uh, Margaret went to Tibet. She was actually a, um, a doctor on a, an expedition to Mount Everest. Uh, she was a doctor in base camp. And uh, Europe 65-16 was tons of fun. Uh, Julie is a former board member, and she and her mother reenacted the trip that Margie took, her mother took, in uh, 1965 with her best friend. That was a ton of fun. We've had uh, um, kayakers, just all kinds of uh, travel programs. Uh, cooking, we're lucky enough to have a full kitchen in our library. Uh, if you don't, there are um, places available in most small towns that you, where you could hold a cooking program. Um, I know a lot of churches have um, kitchens um, and, and community centers. Um, when we built our library, we were very adamant and wanting a full kitchen. Uh, we've done bread and pie, uh, sea salt caramels, um, what, oh, another kind of, uh, we did peanut brittle. Um, um, and, and these programs we sometimes do have to charge a fee uh, to cover the price of ingredients, but you get to take home either a loaf of bread to bake, or a pie to bake, or take home candy. And everyone in your community, I mean every community has cooks, good bakers. Uh, floral arrangements, um, we do not have a floral shop in Stanley, but one of our summer residents owned a floral shop on the other side of the hill on the uh, Sun Valley Ketchum side um, of the pass, and she volunteered to bring up all the the goodies we needed to to make flower arrangements. And once again, there was a fee for the materials, but you got to take home uh, a beautiful flower arrangement. Laugh Lines is a fairly recent addition to our programs. Um, uh, this is dramatic readings of uh, obviously comical um, uh, sketches, uh, short little plays. There is no memorization involved. You can see that the participants have their scripts in front of them. They're, we do have auditions. Uh, the audition, you show up and tell a joke and then you get a part in, this, in the play. Uh, this is a ton of fun. The community loves this. We partner with our uh, a local restaurant. It's actually right in the same town square as the library is, and uh, um, folks come in and order dinner, and then we entertain them. This we we get good turnouts for this, and it's a lot a lot of fun. Uh, Author Luncheon, uh, we partner with uh, Redfish Lake Lodge for this. Uh, Redfish Lake Lodge is, is quite a famous resort on Redfish Lake. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful venue and they allow us to uh, use their, their restaurant at lunchtime and there is a ticket for this event. This was originally a fundraiser and it, it no longer is a fundraiser, but we still do have to charge admission because you order lunch. <laughs> and um, uh, we're really lucky that um, we have uh, some excellent local authors. Uh, at the top left, that's Ridley Pearson signing for the for the for the kids. He actually did a program for the for the kids and for the adults. Uh, the guy in the striped shirt is Anthony Dore, who wrote All the Light We Cannot See, uh, won the Pulitzer Prize for that. He lives in Boise and was willing to travel uh, to Stanley. Uh, oh, our other partner for this is Idaho Rocky Mountain Ranch, which is kind of an exclusive uh, dude ranch, and they offer the author and guest um, uh, a night at the ranch, which is 
uh, I honestly don't know how much it's worth, but it's worth quite a lot. Um, and our bottom author there is Chris Crutcher. These happen to be all Idaho authors. Um, we're fortunate that uh, people are willing to travel to Stanley to uh, participate in this. And it does help to have that, that incentive of uh, the night at Idaho Rocky Mountain Ranch. Uh, also, if there are more than, uh, well, Boise is about three hours away. If they're more than three hours away, the author, we, we will pay their uh, um, gas money to get here. We've never purchased an airline ticket. We've never had to do that. But um, this is one of our signature events that we, always draws a good crowd. Lectures. Uh, this is a good example of um, tapping into uh, your local, uh, like Fish and Game, um, Forest Service, uh, your state parks, um, or just um, someone in your community who is an expert in some field. Um, Obviously, not everyone's going to have a wolverine study in their backyard, but we did, and uh, we had a packed house for um, three different biologists uh, came in and, and talked about this ongoing wolverine study that started in the early 90s and uh, continues to this day. Uh, we had a local expert on um, Bay Horse, a mining community, which is downriver. Oh, about 60 miles and then up to the top of the mountain. I'm not sure how far that is. Uh, but it's not one of the more well-known historical sites in, in our neighborhood. And he actually got a grant from the Idaho Humanities Council to study um, and compile history on this area. And he actually came to us and said, I have to give a program. Can I do it at your library? And once you start doing innovative programming like this, programs do seem to fall from the sky. Um, like this guy from the, the Humanities Council needed a venue to give his lecture. Also, uh, Orville Hansen is a former US Senator, and he's given several lectures. Um, the one I'm showing here is ratification debate in the states and the making of a nation, which doesn't sound really thrilling, but once again, we had a packed house for that. And just local people who are um, experts. Um, we have a guy that likes to do lectures. Um, I, I, he just comes up with these ideas. Uh, I, I'd like to talk about DNA and genetics next week or the, in two weeks. and. Um, people show up. <laughs> Collectors are a, a, a great um, place to tap into. Um, everyone who collects is so proud of their collections and uh, some of them can be really eclectic. Uh, our, uh, one of our local counts, uh, town councilmen uh, collects Navajo rugs and he had never done a presentation before. Um, and we we approached him and he said, well, I'll do it, but I don't I don't think I have very much to say. Well, he brought in all his books and he brought in a huge collection of rugs. And this is in our old library, and uh, we had rugs upstairs and downstairs. And once Lem got going about his rugs and his passion for collecting them, uh, he he totally lost his nervousness. Uh, really got into it, and um, our program ended up being like twice as long as we thought it would be. Um, like that gal who did the lightning round um, program on uh, checking out the books as presents, one of our most well attended programs is our annual Christmas reading. Um, and we do call it a Christmas reading. Um, Stanley is mostly uh, either Christian or agnostic or um, non-religious, I guess you would say. Um, and 
for this venue, we uh, partner with uh, Beckwith Lodge in Lower Stanley, which um, is a, a huge uh, log lodge that is uh, rented out. And we, as as soon as uh, January 1st rolls around, we, we call up and we try and do this the first weekend in December so that it's like a kickoff for the holiday season. Uh, we have uh, uh, people bring hors d'oeuvres and Christmas spirits. We do have wine and beer there. Um, some years we read uh, one book. Um, a smaller book, um, some of our favorites. Um, the best Christmas pageant ever is a huge hit, uh, The House Without a Christmas Tree. Um, we did Skipping Christmas by John Grisham. We did have to edit that one down a little bit. Uh, we have read um, the illustrated classics version of a Christmas Carol because it was just a, it was a little bit shorter. We try to keep the reading to about an hour. We gather at around six o'clock and um, we just mingle for till about seven and uh, eat and drink and then we um, do our stories. When we do an entire book, uh, each person reads a chapter, and then other years. Um, uh, volunteers just choose a short reading uh, poem, a short short story, um, something generally less than five minutes. Uh, it's it's one of uh, by far one of our better attended programs, and it's for all ages. Although in Stanley we don't have a lot of kids, so it's it generally ends up being mostly adults. Um, adult coloring and Zen tangles. Uh, if you're not doing adult coloring, I don't know why. It's the cheapest, easiest program, and it's just so much fun and uh, so relaxing. Um, this could also be a, a passive program, and the cost, of course, is minimal. Uh, this year, we have added Zen tangling. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, we have a, a young gal in our community who is uh, quite a, a fantastic artist, and she's been showing us the art of Zen tangling. She's not a certified Zen tangle teacher, um, but we do have this book available for checkout as well. Outdoor music. During the uh, summer season in Stanley, um, there is live music at one venue every day of the week. Um, but it's usually um, it's bluegrass country. Um, the, the late night shows are, are uh, rock and roll. We actually have a music festival um, one weekend. Um, so we try and get alternative music, uh, something that they're not going to hear on a regular, at one of these other regular venues. Um, the top left is uh, two members of the San Diego uh, Chamber Music Society. Uh, they have family in Stanley, so uh, they come up, they bring their French horn and their marimba, <laughs> and um, this was one of those programs, too, that dropped out of the sky. They're like, oh, the Newtown Square, could we bring our instruments and play music there? And we're like, well, of course. Um, and after they started doing this, um, one of the gals from the Wood River Orchestra, which is the Wood River is on the other side of Galena Pass in the Haley Ketchum Bellevue, Sun Valley area, that's the Wood River Valley. Um, she's like, well, I can't get the whole orchestra, but I could get some of us to come up and play. So um, they're the ones in the lower right corner. Uh, fortunately, we do have um, a venue in, in the library large enough that if weather did not cooperate, they could. The, the orchestra might be a little 
crowded, but um, we do have a backup for that. And and none of these, um, um, I think we pay $250 for the uh, chamber music and the Wood River Orchestra didn't charge us anything. Um, and, you know, um, even your high school band could could be a part of this. And I know that almost every community has their local musicians that might be willing to play at your library, indoors or out. Therapy dogs, uh, unfortunately, um, the woman who did our therapy dog program is only a, a summer resident, so we don't have a therapy dog in the school. But uh, Wendy did this program with um, her dog, Powder, um, and um, explained to us how to be, become a therapy dog, all the steps that they need to take. And uh, Powder did come to the library for that. Um, if uh, she lived here year round, we would definitely have our kids reading to the therapy dogs. Um, home brewing. This is the second year we did home brewing. Um, uh, my assistant, actually, um, that helps me at the library on weekends, uh, has been home brewing for years. And uh, we did this program last year. Uh, we had eight participants last year. And uh, we did it again this year. And we only had two, as you can see. But we still considered this a, a huge success because these two young men are not library users. Uh, so whenever we can get someone into our library that normally doesn't use the library, we consider that a win. Um, and the best part about the home brewing program is they actually do brew beer. And then in uh, six months or whenever, <laughs> I'm not even sure how long it takes, um, they get together and, and sample their brew. All right, campfire stories for grown-ups. We do this in our um, in the town square. If you remember that uh, first photo of the library and the uh, partnership, um, we're in this town square with uh, the Gerheim Gallery and the Sluice uh, Restaurant and a yoga studio and uh, a mountain climbing guide shop. Um, but in the Square, we bring in a portable fire pit, and uh, this one we try to keep just for grown-ups so that, you know, you can bring uh, wine and beer, and we tell stories around the campfire. Um, we actually were rained out this year, uh, so uh, we didn't have a chance to do that, so I don't have a great picture of that, but we had such a blast with this. Uh, we laughed so hard. And I wish I had the pictures from our inaugural event because everyone, everyone is just cracking up. But unfortunately, they were on an old digital camera that um, they were on the camera's memory and the cord for that camera is long gone. So uh, basket making or really you could do any um, handcraft, knitting, crochet, quilting. We just happen to have in our neighborhood a woman who makes willow baskets. Uh, this um, also is uh, people come back to do this each time we, we um, have had the program. We have had return participants um, just to help improve their craft. Um, uh, or just because they enjoyed it so much. Um, this one makes a mess. Uh, this and the floral arranging, uh, you'll be finding bits um, for days, sometimes weeks. <laughs> there, oh, there's more pine needles. Um, we're also very fortunate that we have a ret uh, retired uh, professor from College of Idaho who um, is a writing teacher and also a published author. And he volunteers his time 
um, every winter. Um, we've had essay writing, uh, science writing, a memoir, and uh, current events writing. Um, uh, John volunteers his time. Um, he does ask that participants make a donation to the library. So the only thing we're really out there is just the time in our meeting room, which is, you know, nothing. Um, and I realize that not every community has a retired writing professor and published author, but there's probably a retired English teacher. Um, and honestly, I don't think you would really need a, a, a teacher or a writing professional to do these. Um, there are all kinds of prompts um, that you, you could meet at your library like once a month and just write from a prompt or share what you've written from a prompt. Uh, photography, uh, everyone uh, in your Every community has somebody who is an expert in digital photography, um, maybe printed photography. Uh, you saw on the um, in the town square we have the Gerheim Gallery. Well, this is Mr. Thad Gerheim who does large format photography, um, which is quite a different process than uh, 35 millimeter or digital and uh, he uh, has given us excellent demonstrations on um, oh, uh, how the camera works um, and he and his uh, partner hike into the wilderness um, and so he actually brought in his their backpacks and showed us how they packed everything to to get to where they could take these photographs um, so, and, and people these days are, are, are very interested in photography and uh, even if you have a digital, or especially if you have a digital uh, professional, um, you will, you'll get people there. Um, deep Sea Illustrator, now this one I know, very few people are going to have a deep sea illustrator in their community, but this is an, a good example uh, that I have of um, cutting out articles from from newspapers that seem interesting. Uh, this was in the Wood River paper, and uh, one of the people on the um, the programming committee said, "This is just so amazing. Let's let's call her and ask her." And she she actually does live in uh, the Wood River Valley when she's not uh, out at sea in a submersible drawing deep sea creatures. Um, but every community does have some person who's done something really unique. Uh, Make a Valentine, this is such a simple program. Uh, Karen in the upper left hand corner is um, is an artist by trade. Mostly she works with stained glass and oil painting, but she said, sure, I'll, I'll do a class on making a valentine. And we made really fancy valentines that year. Um, but this has now evolved into um, a passive program. And so every year, about a week before Valentine's Day, we just get out all the materials and leave them in the community room and people can come and go and um, as they please to make their valentines and uh, uh, I have a couple of gentlemen that they rely on this for us. <laughs> you have to do valentines <laughs> and, and it's a, such a simple and low cost program. Uh, wildflower and birding walks, these are fairly new um, for our library. Um, we, Like I said, we are pretty fortunate that we live in um, an amazing natural area with um, plentiful wildflowers and and birds, but this could also be um, uh, local garden tours, um, uh, also related um, master gardeners. 
are required to hold to do some kind of teaching experience um, to, to maintain their their status as a master gardener so um, you could um, I'm sorry I'm getting a little tired today you could you could um, make this program fit to your community the, uh, there are often uh, in every community someone with a fabulous vegetable and or flower garden and uh, that these and there's also someone who knows a lot about birds I can guarantee you that uh, this was a new program for us this fall apple tasting um, I actually missed this one because I was at the ARSL conference in Fargo uh, it was a great fall program um, I just heard of a fabulous program at a library in North Liberty Iowa where um, their local brewery came in and did uh, uh, beer and food pairings um, so um, I know that some libraries frown on alcohol in the building um, possibly you could hold that kind of a program um, at a uh, maybe at a local pub or even in uh, someone's home uh, this one uh, if we ever did this one again I would not limit it to women I would just have basic car maintenance for anyone um, but I had these two guys one who actually had just joined my board offer to do this program and th that's what they came up with um, so yeah I said sure you guys can do this and um, it was it was very successful they um, they learned really basic things like how to check your tire pressure um, how to fill your windshield wiper reservoir how to check your oil um, it's been a while since we did this I don't think they actually did do an oil change but um, the, and this one was held at the firehouse um, they emptied and we do have a volunteer fire department and they emptied two of the bays and brought in their personal cars and um, did some car maintenance um, one thing that we're really looking forward to this year is uh, programming for the Eclipse. It's a pretty um, exciting experience, and we do happen to be like right there <laughs> on the total on the path of totality. So um, fortunately, um, there are many astronomers coming to our our town for this event and have uh, graciously agreed to uh, um, partner with us for a, uh, a lecture on eclipses and um, uh, we have uh, an astronomer coming to uh, show people how to use a telescope and then we'll also do a program on safe viewing and probably have actually a library event the day of this eclipse and many of your libraries will be on this path of totality and um, even if you're not I'm sure there will be many live streaming uh, events going on um, NASA and StarNet libraries um, StarNet libraries are offering um, all kinds of webinars and um, uh, offers for free uh, viewing glasses uh, so check out StarNet libraries and uh, see what uh, they have to offer you um, let's see here I've lost my cursor here we go and one thing that I highly recommend doing um, anyone who presents for a program at your library please send them a handwritten thank you note it's it's a small thing to do um, but it's also a very big thing to do people are, are very appreciative to get 
an actual handwritten note. I, I make ours on uh, note, Avery note cards and um, so they're, they're inexpensive and uh, when you do that you'll find that um, people are, are willing to come back and do a program again. Um, this is my little handout that um, I usually give when I do this in in person. Uh, this will be, of course, um, archived and uh, recorded. Um, if you would like me to email one, I uh, would be happy to do that as well. And here's my email address. And fireworks to end this program with a bang. Um, thanks, everybody, for attending. Um, you know, it's been a long day, so. Yes, thank you for those fireworks. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, thank you very much, Jane. Um, uh, that was, those were some great ideas. I, I like uh, the fact that a lot of them are um, things specific to people, the ideas specific to people you have in your community or that you know about. And I think the general idea is just look to your community, see who, who's out there doing something interesting. You know somebody, a board member knows somebody, a volunteer knows somebody, or is somebody who has just got some interesting, some special interest or something they know about, and that that can be a presentation. There's there's the the, the ideas you know, are endless. It's true, and every community has those unique individuals, and uh, with usually very little. Um, it, it doesn't take them. It doesn't take much to talk them into sharing their expertise. Mm -hmm. I'm particularly impressed. You said you have live music somewhere in town every day during the summer. Oh yes, that's yeah. pretty well, amazing. <laughs> it is actually, <laughs> yeah. Um, but it it's a big draw, and when you have a lot of people um, coming to your community, you need to keep them entertained. Mm -hmm. All right, we do have a couple of questions that have come in. If anybody does have any okay. questions, please do type them into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, the campfire stories for adults that you had, Does the question is, does anybody who's there just tell stories, or do you have people and stories lined up ahead of time? Uh, usually, um, I, I try to make sure that we have some people showing up that have a story to share. Mm -hmm. um, um, I think it's best that you have at least a few, um, but generally everyone who shows up has some kind of anecdote that they will end up sharing. Okay. Um, someone, uh, how about these sessions that you hold, hold elsewhere? Mm -hmm. um, not at the library. Um, are those then um, promoted as um, sponsored by the library? How do you connect that back to being something, um, a library program? Yes, they are all um, Stanley Community Library Presents. Um, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the, 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 the car maintenance at the firehouse that people would understand, well, this, is, this was happened because of the library. Yeah, I think on the poster there, yeah, it shows. Um, oh, yep, there's your yeah. logo down there at the bottom. Yeah, yep. yeah, we try and put the logo on, on every poster and um, um, we also do um, uh, uh, an article in our, our local paper, um, our, our county paper. Um, that is actually the other, the other question I had was how do you publicize all of these different events? Okay, well in Stanley it's uh, a lot of times word of mouth. Uh, we, <laughs> we, we place uh, posters um, at the library, the post office, the clinic. Um, uh, we have two small uh, little grocery stores. Um, we post um, there. Uh, year-round and during the summer there's a lot of other shops and restaurants open and whoever will put our flyer up we will put it up there uh, we do have a Facebook page um, and we also have a local events email list that we send um, 
reminders of programs coming up. Okay, so a lot of the traditional ones, but then look for things like that that are specific to your area that you have. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, all right. All right, that was the last question we had. Anybody have any last-minute questions they desperately want to ask of Jane right now? <laughs> Um, if you don't, there is her email address there. You can ask her for tips about any of the events that they've done at their library. And if anyone has a really great program that they've done that they would like to share with me, I, I would love to hear it. Mm, yes, definitely. Always, Everyone is looking for, for new ideas, I'm sure. I mean, you did a whole presentation on them, but that yeah, any, <laughs> anything else new? I'm sure you're looking for other ones to do. <laughs> uh, well, we had um, at our book discussion last night, uh, actually we had a, um, a young mother telling about her, her eight-year-old son who is totally into these junior ranger programs, and he yeah. and his family have been tra traveling to national parks and monuments for him to complete all of these programs and we're going to ask Grady, eight-year-old Grady, if he mm. would give a presentation about his trips uh, oh. to fulfill his junior ranger badge. Mm -hmm. I think awesome. we'll get a great turnout for, him, for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to see how, how brave he is to do that. Awesome. Um, we do have one last question we'll ask of you. Um, oh, oh, here. Um, Oh, someone given has an idea for one. You're asking for ideas. Um, this is a slow cooking in the fast lane is the um, program they do. People make a crock pot dish and bring it, and then the, and the written recipe to share. Um, and then at the library, then they make photocopies of all the recipes for people to take home, and then it's like a potluck event dinner. But then everybody shares their recipes as well. Oh, that's a great idea. That's a good one. Food is always a good a good attraction. Oh, it, it yep, yep. And I like to show you the recipes. So many times I've been to events or that we have here or parties, and you, you always say, you know, oh, that's a great one. I wish I could have that recipe. And having a nice organized thing to do that and share the actual recipe afterwards, that's a good idea. <laughs> um, all right, we have one last question I'll throw out there that someone did ask. What do you like best about your your small library, your small rural library? Oh man, um, <laughs> I I would have to say Loaded. that. Well, I, I would have to say that I, I really know my patrons. Um, uh, I love doing readers advisory <laughs> even more than I love programming, <laughs> and uh, getting it, I, I I pretty much know everyone in town, um, and. I'm also very lucky that during the summer I get to meet so many interesting people passing through. Mm. It's a pretty unique situation. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Jen. I think that's a perfect wrap-up for today. Um, well, thank you for asking me. Yeah, thank you so much for um, your um, ideas. Uh, and that is our final session for Big Talk from Small Libraries uh, 2017.